All right. Today we're going to talk about the chevron weave. The chevron weave is based on the basic S weave, but it is essentially two S weaves that are paired and sort of um, they sort of exchange in the middle. <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about keeping tension on the chevron weave, and we're also going to talk a little bit about patterns and how the patterns uh, change, how they're adjusted, um, and then uh, we're going to look at both sort of the forward direction and the inverse direction here. So with a chevron, you're going to want two sort of sets of cords because you're going to have two halves of the whole thing here. And normally I would connect these with a lark's head knot, but these rings are so small <clears throat> that that's really not worth it. So uh, we're just going to sort of assume that this is going to work out the way we we're hoping for. So <clears throat> typically with a chevron, uh, I like to start, start from the outside and go in. I find that a little bit easier. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with the outside in, and then we're going to switch to the inside out. And I've done two things here. Um, I've set these cords up so that you'll be able to see both the parallelisms here. Ooh, actually, no, I've not quite done that correctly yet. Hold on. Alright, that should do it. Alright, so I've set this up so that you're going to both be able to see parallels like what happens if you set up something symmetrically, and what happens if you set up something asymmetrically. So what should happen here is that these red and silver cords are going to <coughs> have a symmetric pattern throughout, and then this gold and this gold and yellow will swap positions throughout. So that's how you set up symmetry and asymmetry in a chevron. Alright, so to go outside in is going to create sort of a, is going to create a V pattern and that one I find easier and you can do under over if you want to I'm going to do over under because uh, that's what I'm used to and I like to start from the left hand side you can start from the right hand side if you prefer um, but generally we're going to keep these sort of split and I'm going to weave from the outside in you want to really keep track of where the middle is in a chevron uh, and I prefer honestly I like to have at least two clips um, I have some sandwich clips that I'd like to use <coughs> or maybe uh, not sandwich clips they are chip clips these kind of wiry things uh, and those are really really helpful for uh, keeping the place in the chevron loop for me I'm going to weave from the outside on the other half. Over under. Over under. And when we get to the middle here, we're going to be swapping directions. <coughs> so that went. Uh, oh man, wrong. It did. Alright, now we're remembering. We're remembering the tricks about the chevron. So to go from uh, from one side, we have to go over under, and from the other side, you actually have to go under over. Otherwise, um, you're gonna screw up your center pattern here. There. So you should naturally have uh, your cords cross, like so. And then we're going to weave outside in on the other side again, through under, and that's going to pass over. And so just like I did in the um, S weave, you'll notice I have a tendency to sort of swap these cord direction, uh, cord positions first. And then I'll pass everything through. 
so I will do that, but not the, uh, let me do that in the sort of not shortcut way. I won't call it a cheating way because it's totally accurate and fine and it gets you a good, it gets you good speed on something that is complicated. Alright, so this is actually going to give us, um, this is going to give us a triangle sort of shape rather than a V shape. I'm going to have to do this sort of video a little bit backwards here. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, over. <coughs> give those a tug. Give that a tug. And this is really why having cords is really helpful, uh, having clips is really helpful. You really got to pay attention to where your middle is. I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So that's my middle now. Untangle everything. Get that all one other tug. So we're getting there. This is where it really helps to have clips, because I would like to have my clips right here. And then I would be able to bring this in and tighten, and uh, I would pull these a little tighter even, actually. There we go. You'll notice I'm actually sort of pushing things toward the middle, which is helpful. Uh, it's really helpful with um, with the chevron weave. Your middle is always going to be your sort of problem child, and it's the section that you have to pay attention to. All right. So you can see how the Gold and yellow are swapping sides. We're going to go a few more rows so you can see how the silver and red are going to stay parallel. <clears throat> and those two are going to stay symmetrical, and then the other ones are not. Under on the side. I'm going to go under over on the other side. Again, otherwise your middle gets all messed up. <clears throat> I highly recommend that when you're weaving a chevron, if you have to stop, always make sure you stop uh, and know which side you need to weave next. So I would suggest stopping consistently, like always stop when you need to
to weave the, from the right next, or from the left next. Just pick whatever your, your personal convention is going to be, and stick with it, otherwise you're going to forget. Uh, I speak from experience. And then you have to undo a few rows, figure out where you were, and, and start again. And that's no fun. There we go. Let's just do one more here. We're going to get to the point where our gold and yellow are on the outside. <clears throat> and then we're actually going to change directions with this weave. And we'll show you what that looks like. And then I will undo this. Maybe uh, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we show you the swapping directions in both sets, in, in both senses of the of the idea here. We're gonna swap direction from this way to the other way, and then vice versa. That way, I get to talk about tension in all of the directions. center here. There we go. So we're about there. Alrighty, so now we're ready to change direction. I'm actually gonna pause pull my foot down. I need to switch feet because my foot was falling asleep. So now, we're going to change directions and go from outside in to inside out. And since we've got these cords here, sometimes it's really important to do a little switch over in the middle. When you're switching from out, outside in to inside out, it's not too bad. Like sometimes you're gonna end up with a little gap here in the middle, um, so it can be useful to switch. Uh, so I'm, I've got uh, two pairs of center here cords here. It can be really useful to just take this cord here and switch under, like so, and switch under like so. Just do that sort of a job real quick. So you're gonna do sort of an over under sort of thing. <coughs> So we were, we were here, like so. And I'm gonna go and pop this one under. Do like that. And then to go from the outside in, or inside out rather, I'm gonna go under. Under, over, all the way to the outside. And give that tug. We're gonna get everything. 
in here a nice tug, snug it up like so. All right, so that little middle trick's really helpful for keeping everything sort of uh, nice and tight in the center. Not even nice and tight, it's really more about just not having gaps there. All right, so I was weaving to the left first, so I'm gonna weave over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Take this outside cord, like so. And this center cord here now. Again, you really have to keep track of your centers. I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, under from the center. And I'm going to put my finger in the shed again. Just like so. Pull that through. There we are. The other thing that this little crossover deal does is that it creates this nice little bullseye right in the center. You don't necessarily need to do that little crossover in this direction, but it really does help. And of course, you might find that you need to come in here with some pliers. Uh, so I have some needle nose, some smooth, round needle nose jewelry pliers that help me do that sort of tension job. So we were le weaving, um, always wanted to go over under, which meant that we were weaving to the left first. So we're gonna go over under. And now my middle most cord here is going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. So if I hadn't turned around with the weave the way I did, you would get this sort of arrowhead shape that repeats. It would repeat right here. And you would see multiples of those as you go down. The pattern that I'm creating now is what's called a bullseye uh, by most of the native communities that I've seen who do weaving, uh, finger weaving in this style. So, and oh, we are getting some whip issues here, aren't we? This is actually fairly common uh, when you do a bullseye like this. It's really easy for the sides here to widen out. That's okay. Um, I would need to go through with my pliers and pull all of this snug in order to get these uh, sides to be nice and parallel. But we're not doing that today because we are worried mostly about how to hold tension in your hands and um, how to do the weave in the first place. So now we're weaving basically here down. We're weaving from the middle out. We just finished going to the right side. Like I said, you always want to stop so you know how you're going to weave next. And I know I always want to weave over under. So the only way, looking at my middle here, the only way I can weave over under because that's what I decided, is to weave from right to left. So I'm gonna take my right middlemost and go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, all the way across. Give that a tug. Like so. 
down. This over. And then now I can go over under from the other side. me weave a little bit more of this and we're going to get to a point where we're going to go ahead and turn this around again. So I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 